Ramistola Polcripes, also known in the hobby as the Chaco Golden Knee, is a New World terrestrial tarantula that is endemic to the subtropical nation of Paraguay. This tea can grow to an adult size of around 7 to 9 inches, with males living about 6 to 7 years, while females can live 20 to 25 years. This species has a medium growth rate, and while it isn't the slowest grower, if you get your golden knee as a small sling, it may be years before you see the true adult coloration. Being a New World Tarantula, this tea does not have medically significant venom, but does possess urticating hairs. This species has a reputation of being very docile and rarely kicking hairs. But bear in mind that temperament can differ between specimens and even between molts of the same specimen. This tarantula is an opportunistic burrower. But the older they get, the less they seem to burrow and the more they tend to just move substrate around their enclosure. I keep my spiderlings in a basic acrylic spiderling enclosure with enough substrate for them to burrow. I provide them with a hide and a water dish if possible. This species is notorious for filling its water dish with substrate, so you may have more luck dripping water on the leaves of a plant or on the side of the enclosure. As slings, I keep the substrate slightly moist, like with most of my spiderlings, but not swampy or oversaturated. As juveniles, I move them into an acrylic terrestrial enclosure with more width than height. This species is known to climb the walls and across the top of the enclosure, especially for the first month or two in a new enclosure. So it is important to make sure there is plenty of substrate so the tea doesn't have a long way to fall if it were to slip while crawling across the top of its enclosure. They may also still want to burrow at this stage, so it is a good idea to make sure that they have adequate dirt to dig into. I provide a hide and water dish and keep the substrate dry, but make sure to clean the dirt out of its dish so clean water is always available. When they reach adult size, I keep my Chacos in a 5 to 10 gallon aquarium or acrylic enclosure. This species is still prone to climb walls at this size, so it is important to fill the enclosure half to three quarters of the way up with substrate so the tea has no more than one and a half times its leg length to fall from the top. If you are using a 5 or 10 gallon enclosure, it is important to avoid screen lids as the tea can get its feet stuck in the screen and be stuck hanging upside down. You can replace the screen with a sheet of acrylic with holes drilled in it, or at the very least get a heavy duty reptile lid with a thick metal screen with plenty of room in the grate so the tea's feet do not get caught. Again, I provide my adults with a hide and water dish and keep the substrate dry. I keep this tea at the same temperature of most all my teas, which is room temperature between 68 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're comfortable, your tarantula is comfortable. The Gramistola polcripes is a fairly good eater unless they're fasting while I'm pre mold It is a Gramistola, so there is a possibility that it will fast for months at a time, so don't be too concerned if it goes through long periods of time without taking food. Just pull out any uneaten prey and try again in a week or two. I feed my spiderlings flightless fruit flies when they are under a half an inch and then switch to one small cricket or roach once or twice a week depending on the size of the abdomen. I try to avoid overfeeding my spiderlings. Once they grow to the juvenile stage, I feed them two to three medium crickets or a mealworm or two once a week. Again, cutting back on the amount or frequency as the abdomen becomes swollen and it appears to be approaching a molt. And I feed my adult female G. polcripes four to five adult crickets every seven to 10 days and occasionally switch up her feeders with a couple of big roaches or mealworms. This tea is quite the excavator at any stage, so don't spend too much time meticulously setting up its enclosure as it will spend most of its night rearranging everything and destroying any elaborate setting you made for it. My experience with these teas is that they are very docile and mine has never kicked hairs at me. But they are also curious and nearly any time I take the lid off the enclosure, my Chacos will slowly start moving their way up the wall and out of their home doing a little exploring. 
This is an amazing tarantula to observe with their bright gold accents and beautiful appearance. They are usually out on display and not very skittish. It is fascinating to watch them diligently moving dirt around and constantly rearranging their environment and filling their water dish up with dirt. This is a hardy and thick tarantula and very easy to care for. They make a wonderful beginner species and are relatively inexpensive and widely available. Be wary buying this tea from a national chain pet store as they tend to sell a lot of males and charge $100 for a tea that you could buy from a reputable online dealer for less than half that. I do not normally handle any of my tarantulas, but this tea is on a very short list of teas that I would consider handling when showing off my collection to friends. The Gramistola Polkripes is very easy to care for, docile, and a must-have for any collection. The Gramistola Polkripes is an amazing tarantula. I had the pleasure of getting mine as a small sling, probably about three quarters of an inch, and I've been able to watch it grow throughout the years. I've had it longer than most of the tarantulas in my collection. Now, I used to keep my girl on my desk at work and she molted about five, six months ago. That was a footage you saw of a tarantula molting standing up. That was also the moment where I discovered she was female. She hasn't molted since and doesn't appear to be close to molting and that's just kind of the Gramistola genus. They take quite a while to grow. <laughs> but it's been fun watching her grow up over the years. It's gotta be one of my favorite tarantulas in the collection. And I don't do a lot of handling of my teas, but if I was going to, she would definitely be on a short list of teas that I would handle. She's never kicked hairs at me, never given me a threat pose, and I've been in there messing around with her enclosure and taking photos, and, and she just is pretty laid back and easy going. I picked up my Choco Goldeny years ago from Tanya over at Fear Non Tarantulas. She took really good care of me. Now they don't sponsor these videos, I'm just a big fan and like to give them some love. But they do give a 10% discount to all the members of my Facebook group. So if you head over to the Tarantula Collective group on Facebook, send one of the moderators a message. They will hook you up with a 10% discount code to FNT. So thank you guys for that. I know we all appreciate that. We just launched the merchandise store on the tarantulacollective.com. We've got shirts, hoodies, all kinds of cool stuff. So be sure to check that out. I got the links down below in the description. And there's also a new Amazon store. So if you're curious about any of the stuff I have behind me here, from the enclosures to the tools that I use, the books that I've read, anything like that, just check the links down below. And if you do buy anything through the Amazon store, a small fraction of that does come back to help support the channel. You know, I appreciate any love you send my way. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode episode of Tarantula Tuesday. I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button. Let me know. And if you want to support this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and share this video with your friends. Help me get the word out. Well, that's going to be it for me. I will see you next Tuesday.